Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18 brings many new features and changes with visual changes and more, but there's some big changes to talk about with the photos app and camera app. So I thought we'd talk about everything new specifically for those dedicated apps. Now, if we go into camera, the overall camera app itself hasn't changed a lot, but there's some settings to talk about before we talk about the fully redesigned photos app. If we go into settings, go down to camera within camera, we have the option to record sound. And under this option, we have a new option for allow audio playback. It says audio playback will not pause automatically when recording a video. When playing audio using the iPhone speaker, audio will be recorded in mono. So what that means is you could go in, maybe go ahead and play a song. And while you're playing that song, if you go into the camera, switch to video, it will not pause the music automatically. So you can record, have audio in the background. Maybe you want to record a vlog and have some royalty free audio in the background. You can now do that. There's also a new option under preserve settings. If we go back into our camera settings and go to preserve settings, we now have a couple options here with preserve settings, but we have a new one where we have the controls menu where it says preserve the previously used camera tool when expanding the controls menu, rather than showing the list of camera tools. So what this means is if you're in the camera itself and maybe you go into the tools, press the little button here, and maybe you're in exposure. If we go back out, Go back into the camera app, go into our tools. Exposure is the first thing that shows up. So it will actually preserve the setting that you have for that, whether it's exposure or maybe personal or shared or pro for pro res. And if we go back out, back in, go into that menu, you'll see that it preserved the last setting we selected. So those are some new helpful updates. The photos app though, is where we get the biggest change this year. Let me go ahead and stop the music here and we'll go into photos itself. Within photos, we have a big change as far as the overall design itself. Now, originally we had a carousel that scrolled left to right. Many people didn't like that. So they got rid of that altogether. And now there's photos at the top with different categories at the bottom. And if we take a look here, if we scroll up to our photos, we have some new options that show up at the bottom. Those disappear as we scroll up, scroll back down and those options show up to sort between years, months, and all. We can also sort here on the left with things such as a recently added date, libraries, shared libraries, and we have some new options to filter as well as if we go back to filter, go to view options, we can see many things here as well. So there's a lot of different sort options. Again, we can filter between favorites, edited photos, videos, and screenshots, and you just have different options for your personal and shared libraries and recently added. It's a very nice and easy way to sort of see exactly what you want to see within your library. One big change this year, you may have already noticed in the upper right is we have a little search button. If we go into search, you'll see things that I have recently, just the wallpaper here, and you can now search with better context. So you could say blue shirt and it will find photos that have blue shirts in them, or we could find cars and it will actually give suggestions for those cars. So you'll see things that have the word car in them or car scoops or just cars in general. You can actually sort through those. It says text found. You've got photo mater, different albums, there, trips to Las Vegas, things like that. Any place there's things with the word car in it, it will actually find that you could search for someone specifically or winter. 2022, maybe let's try that. Any photo that was taken around 2022 in the winter, it will find that it's just much better as far as the overall context here. Now to go along with search that we just searched for different things based on context, there's some new settings for that as well. If we go into our settings and then we scroll down, go to our apps, go to photos here, we'll go to photos. And within photos, we have a new option for search. So if we go into search, we can show content in, in search, show app in search. And if we go back and we scroll all the way to the bottom, we have a new option for enhanced visual search. It says, allow this device to privately match places in your photos with a global index maintained by Apple. So you can search by almost any landmark or point of interest. So again, you can turn that on or off if you want to. So some features to go along with the search option. Now in the upper right, you have your little account icon. If we go into the account icon, you'll see things here with the overall photos you have and videos. It says syncing pause for 13 minutes. And if we scroll down, it says for your shared library, you can identify participants. And we have different view options as well, such as library view options with personal library, shared library, or both libraries. And none of this is actually new this year, but the overall option menu is show in main view with hidden albums, view options for autoplay motion and view full HDR. 
You've got your sharing library options, show featured content and show holiday events. So all of those are in this menu here in the upper right. Now within a photo, they've changed the overall menu at the bottom where we have share on the left. We can favorite it. It identifies some things within the photo. We have options to edit and then of course delete. If we tap on the one in the middle, it identifies the trees here. You can look up the plant and it will tell you more about this. So that's something we had before, but they've redesigned the menu. We also have options in the upper right where we tap the three dot menu and we have the options such as copy, duplicate, hide, show in all photos, play a slideshow, add to album, move to shared album. We can adjust the date and time, adjust the location, and then of course change the overall look of it with edit. We'll take a closer look at that in just a moment, but let's take a look at the albums. So now if we scroll down, just keep scrolling, we've got our different albums with recent days albums, pinned collections, memories, trips, media types, as well as utilities. We can scroll side to side through all the different utilities, seeing things such as recently saved handwriting, illustrations, recently viewed documents, and more. We even have the option for wallpaper suggestions. And at the very bottom, we can customize and reorder tap on customize. And then we could add things such as featured photos, people and pets, remove whatever we have, or just get rid of all of them altogether. Also, if we scroll back up, you'll see that not only do we have the memories, like I mentioned before, we have pinned collections where you can fully modify this within the pinned collections. We can add or delete anything we want, such as people and pets, albums, trips, memories, or more, or add any collection or album. It's up to you. And if you want to see something regularly here, it will pin them for you. Of course, if we go back to customize and reorder, we can reorder any of these. So if we want maybe the pinned ones at the very top or recent days at the very top, we can have that so that we can see what we want to see right at the top of all of our albums. So now I've got pinned collections right at the top. If we go all the way to the bottom under our utilities, of course, we have hidden albums. If we go into hidden albums, it's going to ask us to tap to view the album and it will use face ID or touch ID to unlock this tap view, it unlocks, and then we have our different photos in there. We also have recently deleted that's automatically locked. If there was something that was deleted from a hidden album, if we go into this, you'll see there's a video that I recorded before that I put in delete and I can delete it forever, or I can recover it here and just recover the video just like we could before. But the overall look of it has changed a little bit. The same is true. If we actually recover something that was in a hidden album, it will lock that for us as well. If we go into a photo, I recently took for a thumbnail of a video go to our option to edit and then go to the three dot menu in the upper right. We have a new option for appearance under appearance. We can have it follow the system as far as light and dark mode or switch to light mode back to dark, or just have it follow the system altogether. We also have some new options. If we go into crop, you'll see there's a little lock here where it now actually locks the aspect ratio. So you can have it locked to whatever you'd like, go to the three dot menu and then lock the current aspect ratio. So you can't change it. You can crop, but you actually can't change the aspect ratio itself. So if you had it set as 16 by nine before you can keep it locked to that if you'd like to. Now, after you've fully edited your photo, it's ready to go. Maybe you want to copy those same edits and paste them on another photo. While we could do this before they've updated this. So if we go to copy edits, we now have options to copy the adjustment, copy the crop of the photo and also adaptive adaptive is new where it says automatically detect certain image conditions and adapt adjustments to match the perceived exposure and white balance of this image if possible. So if we copy those and maybe we'll go to the next image here, let's see if we can paste those same edits paste. It should paste that, give it just a moment. And now it should copy the white balance and everything else if it can. So that's something that's new in the overall editing. Now, something that's coming in the future with overall features, this will be with iOS 18.1 on iPhone 15 pro 15 pro max, as well as iPhone 16 models M one iPads and newer, as well as M one max and newer. If we go into photos. Now, if you're using a phone with Apple intelligence enabled, you'll have some new editing options. So if we go into our options to edit and then go to clean up, give it a second to prepare cleanup. Once it's prepared, we'll be able to add additional edits here. So sometimes this can take a moment and you'll see it took just a second. If we zoom in and I just mark over my face here, it will automatically pixelate or blur it. Of course we can undo that. And then if we zoom out here, let's see if we can go back. We'll zoom out here a little bit. See if I trace around me, Let's see if it works, it should detect the object and then delete it. It's a little bit tricky to do. 
Sometimes it doesn't get everything. And sometimes you can actually, there we go. It highlighted me, give it a second. And then it deletes me from the background. You can do this with different options or objects as well. So maybe we want to get rid of this tree, just sort of scrub over the top. It highlights it and gets rid of most of it. Maybe we want to get rid of this point and it kept the fence in the background and got rid of it. So this is a great feature that's been updated. Sometimes it gives suggestions. So if we go to another photo here, so we'll cancel this, discard the changes. We'll go to another photo, give it a second. Once we go into cleanup and it will actually suggest things to delete. So now it highlights them and to get them to delete, just tap on them and they delete. It can take a moment for this to process, but you'll see here, it's got a little van in the background, tap on it, it deletes. And I think there was another one here. Let's undo that. I think there was another one over here where it saw this will tap on it and it will delete. So you can fully clean it up based off suggestions or just highlight whatever you'd like yourself. The other update with Apple intelligence has to do with memories. If we go down to memories, we can tap on create and then create with just a description. So we could say cars in 2023 and then tap go. It takes a moment to process everything. It will even put it to music. So we'll give it just a moment with it's really great animations. It then creates a memory placed to music and you'll see it switches between photos and videos that you have. You can see the next one or any other cars or anything else. It finds exactly what you're looking for. So it goes through your memories, creates those. And again, you'll need Apple intelligence for that. So that's all of the features in iOS 18 with photos and camera. Now the camera could get enhancements with iPhone 16 pro models as we're expecting some changes there. We could see additional features added after that's released, but this is everything coming to iOS 18 so far that we'll see with the photos app where they've made some changes since the initial announcement and made it what it is now. Let me know what you think of photos in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>